It's very quiet uh, at this moment, and hopefully that'll be the last moment of quietude. Um, uh, but nonetheless, there'll be opportunities for conversation and reflection. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone, for joining me both in person and virtually for our 2021 Presidential Summit. I'm really thrilled uh, to see so many great friends and familiar faces here, particularly my Attorney General colleagues from across the country, and I note also the presence of several uh, former uh, Attorneys General, and I want you to know how much I appreciate uh, your presence here. I do want to give a special shout out uh, in this uh, divisive time to my Republican colleagues, uh, both the uh, current uh, Republican Attorneys General, Jason Ravensburg, my great friend Lawrence Wasden, uh, as well as my good bud uh, Dave Yost uh, from Ohio uh, for coming uh, today. Uh, as we know, uh, issues uh, in America, including issues related uh, to things like history, truth, and hate, uh, can be divisive. Uh, I really want to thank uh, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle uh, for walking across the bridge uh, with uh, an open arm uh, and open heart here as we jointly uh, try to tackle uh, issues of hate. And I just wanted to say that um, at the outset because it really does mean the world to me. It's so easy. <laughs> it really is so easy in this time, you know, to just stay home um, and just stay separated. Uh, when our country doesn't need us to be separated, our country needs us to be united, uh, certainly not divided. Also, big thanks to our distinguished panelists and moderators who are here uh, today and will be here tomorrow, some of whom include former uh, U.S. Senator Doug Jones, uh, former Alabama Attorney General uh, Bill Baxley, and former Oklahoma Attorney General, my great friend, Mike Turpin. Um, you all are going to get a great kick out of having Mike join a fireside chat uh, with a noted historian, uh, John Franklin, uh, in just a few minutes. I uh, also want to thank uh, the team at NAG and uh, Chris and Al and the entire group there uh, for helping facilitate this. I know planning large logistical events in a pandemic is that's not easy, uh, and I do appreciate the support. As I said last night, uh, it's also uh, thankful. I'm also quite thankful for the support of the uh, Attorney General Association, AGA, uh, Karen White and her talented team. Uh, and I want to point out again that we teamed together just a few months ago with Attorney General William Tong uh, to put on what I thought was a very substantive and necessary program focusing uh, on the unfortunate hateful activities uh, around hate directed at our Asian American and Pacific Islander community. Again, together uh, we can tackle huge, huge problems. So let me just tell you a little bit about where we've been through this presidential summit and where we're going in the next two days. Throughout the presidential initiative, uh, we've been conducting what will be a year-long inquiry into America's hate problem. At the start of the year, I stood before many of you and raised a five-alarm fire about the FBI's rising hate crime statistics. Sadly, with the release of yet another year of data, it appears as though last year was again, sadly, one of the most violent uh, hate-filled years uh, in our history. We can do better, we must do better, and with truth and reconciliation, I have no doubt that we will do better. We spent a lot of time examining different types of hate and extremism, and we've learned along the way. I, for example, had never heard of a hateful, male-dominated hate group called incel. This is a group of characters, men, who honestly believe that their incelibate status is because of women. And they go out and hurt women, including killing women as a result of this. 
these kinds of groups need to be discussed in the public light, and we need to shut them down because they absolutely hurt people, in this case, women. We've also spoken to former extremists, and I'll never forget the lesson that Christian Piccioloni told us. He told us about his own youth when he was approached by a neo-Nazi hate group. He told us that he was an insecure young person and that the interaction with the neo-Nazis was such that he felt better. He felt that they gave him a sense of identity, community, and purpose. And that identity, community, and purpose led him to be part of that team and part of the violence that he would be a major leader in in Chicago for nearly 15 years. An important lesson from Christian. Don't just write people off who found themselves in hate groups. No, spend time with them. Listen, don't judge. By listening, we have an opportunity to actually fill some of the weaknesses and problems in their lives with love. A better form, I would argue, of identity, community, and purpose. Real strategy from a former hate group member. We also had the honor to learn from survivors and their families. And my goodness, uh, has that been heart-wrenching. We met Maura Blinkley's father. Maura Blinkley was an aspiring diplomat. Um, she happened to be, of course, a 21-year-old college grad. And she's the person in Florida uh, who was shot to death along with others by the incel hate member. We also, of course, met Susan Bro and Rabbi Myers from the Pittsburgh Tree of Life Synagogue. And they shared with you uh, the, their trauma in regards to acts that they've witnessed and how they've been impacted uh, by hate. As Susan Bro said, and I hope she doesn't mind me paraphrasing, you never go to a doctor and expect to walk in the door and have them hand you a prescription. Instead, the doctor needs to understand the symptoms, make an educated and informed assessment, and provide you with a treatment plan. Because we don't fully understand the problem of hate, I think that's part of the problem why we've not been able, able to solve it. And most hate crimes, including the deaths of Mora, that's Susan's daughter Heather, uh, and others, go unreported. That's why 35 attorney generals on a bipartisan basis urged Congress and the White House to pass the Anti-Hate Act that would allow technology and real dollar resources to local law enforcement agencies so that they can collect, gather, and send data around hate and incidents of hates to the FBI. Again, by understanding the scope of the problem, I think that'll help us have a sense of urgency around what we can do to stop the issue. Let me tell you a little bit about where we're going. Uh, we're gonna try to put hate on trial. And as part of my inquiry into hate, we're also examining historic incidents of hate and their lasting legacy. And a big part of that begins today. Indeed, today and tomorrow, we'll hear from renowned historians, lawyers, police chiefs, community leaders, and survivors of hate crimes about how and why we can and must come together. The goal here, and this is important, is not to put America on trial. What we want to do is put hate on trial. Over the next two days, I hope to have thoughtful and deep discussions around two extraordinarily horrific events that occurred in our great country. First, we'll talk about the 1921 Tulsa race massacre, an attack on an affluent black community in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at the hands of a white mob, an entire district of homes and businesses were leveled to the ground. Hundreds of people were killed, some were discarded in mass graves, and survivors were interned. And yet, 
It's a massacre that so many, even bright stars from Oklahoma, have never heard about. We'll start hearing about Tulsa very soon once I get off the podium, and that's when we'll have John W. Franklin, a great historian, uh, get up here and, and educate us about Tulsa. John, of course, is the son of an extraordinary historian, John Hope Franklin, Medal of Freedom winner uh, and a prominent, prominent historian. John Franklin, who's here with us, is also the grandson of B.C. Uh, Franklin, who you'll learn soon was a lawyer uh, in Tulsa, witnessed the events, and used his lawyering skills uh, to try to bring peace and healing. After John's uh, history, he'll be joined by Mike Turpin on this dais uh, for a fireside chat um, around Tulsa. And um, did anybody know Mike Turpin? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> There you go. We can feel the love with Mike. And, you know, Mike is, uh, is going to give love, uh, you know, uh, as he talks about Tulsa and, and his uh, rememberings. They'll also highlight, of course, the human cost of hate and what responsible law enforcement authorities can do to seek accountability and justice. Actually, that last line is going to be for another panel that's focused on law enforcement uh, and best practices. I think that's the panel that uh, our Attorney General Dave Yost will be moderating. Um, so over the next few hours, we'll have a candid conversation about law enforcement challenges to address hate and the value of community trust and partnership in this effort. I'm looking forward to hearing about model policies, trainings, and initiatives that the law enforcement community has developed to address data gaps, increase awareness of hate, weed out extremism, and support those who have experienced hate. Our learning will culminate tomorrow morning at the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the Smithsonian, just, just a few blocks away. It's here that we'll literally be able to walk a 400-year journey uh, of our history uh, in the United States and our tortured history around America's original sin. I think tomorrow is going to be extraordinary. Okay, over the next few days, uh, you'll hear and see things that are hard, that are painful. Uh, you'll also see things that you don't agree with, perhaps. Um, but I challenge all of us to stay engaged. When we come together to educate, legislate, and litigate on these issues, we can really get stuff done, and we can make a real difference. The goal of these discussions is not to badger nor impugn it's to allow history and truth to show a basis of understanding and to recognize that these are precepts to reconciliation and moving forward together. If we can unite, we can lift all people up. That's why we're all here, to find ways to go back to our communities and get things done for our residents and to make a difference in people's lives. I hope that by the end of the summit, will all walk away remembering the following. Learning from our past helps us to try to prevent those same mistakes in the future. Learning is a necessary tool for coming together to address real problems for real people. Frankly, it's also a necessary precept to understanding good policy. Hate rips apart the fabric of our country because it brings out the worst in us and hurts us all, rather than bringing us together. And there are real human impacts to these fissures. We can make all of our community safer by working together to address hate. And stopping hate, of course, is an American issue. Before I turn over to John, I'd like to acknowledge uh, that obviously we're in a very divisive political uh, culture and time right now. Um, and we're too divided as a country. Well, what's the alternative? We can retreat to our political camps and gain nothing from trying to get together on history, uh, truth, and moving forward together. Um, but that's not good. That recipe hasn't taken us very far. Or we can acknowledge hard truths and really work on it. 
one of the most patriotic steps we can take as leaders is to continue to build on the great American experiment to form a more perfect union. We must send a clear message that the America we're trying to build will not provide a home for hate. And it takes a collective and united leadership to make that change. Winston Churchill once remarked that the further back you can look, the further forward you're able to see. And I truly believe that if we have the courage to look back and to take this time to learn from our history, a more perfect union is right within our reach. Over the next two days, let's learn from each other, um, let's respect each other, and let's try as best we can to take the politics out of hate. Before I introduce our keynote speaker, a couple of housekeeping items. First, we're excited to be using the new NAG Meetings app at this event. The app is an extremely useful and environmentally friendly tool to get all the information you need to fully engage at this week's event. If you haven't already, please go ahead and download the app. Next, based on the latest guidance from the District of Columbia and the CDC and the District of Columbia's Department of Health, all attendees and staff have to wear a mask uh, inside or, or a face covering in the indoor parts of this event, uh, except during meals or when you're actively eating. You know, trust your judgment uh, on that uh, and encourage you to, to, uh, to follow you know, the rules. The last thing we want to do uh, is to be in enforcing rules here. Okay. So with that, we're about ready to get started. Um, it's my great privilege to introduce to you our morning's keynote, John W. Franklin. John is a senior manager emeritus of the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of African American History and Culture, and a cultural historian and managing member of the Franklin Global LLC. Go to his, go to his website, Go to his bio and resume, and you'll see the kind of family that this man comes from, a family steeped in American history, a family dedicated to education, and a family that believes in the ability of our country to be a united country. John's going to take us back in time through personal photos and stories to understand the people and places impacted by the Tulsa race massacre and the work done to seek justice in the aftermath. Because not only is John is a renowned historian, I mentioned, of course, his father, John Hope Franklin, and attorney B.C. Franklin, a Tulsa race massacre survivor, take a look at these pictures and try to bring yourself back to that time period in 1921. John, Thank you again so much for helping us understand uh, Tulsa, and thank you very much for joining the Attorney General Room. You can come on up. Following John's remarks, um, there'll be a video, and then after that, I'll join John, as will Mike Turpin, for a fireside chat. Thank you all. <laughs> 